Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Across Africa, our weekly look at stories from across the continent. I'm Georgia Calvin-Smith, and this week, South African university bosses say that there is little chance that student debt could ever be written off. As the cost of education in the country mounts, so does frustration. Also, Scotland's University of Aberdeen will give back a sculpture to Nigeria. The institution now admits that the looted piece was acquired immorally. And we meet the Black Mambas, a pioneering all-female Moroccan-American football team that's taking on traditional views by giving it their all on the pitch. But first, South African students have been calling for free higher education and for all student debt to be written off. Financial aid organizations insist that they're short on cash and college bosses say that there is little chance that student loans will be forgiven. As the cost of education in the country mounts, so does frustration. In Kailicha, thousands dream of going to university. Azola has already completed an undergraduate degree but was unable to get funding for this year. Her studies cost more than 2,000 euros annually. There was no possibility of taking out a loan because there was no way that my family would be able to pay it back and under whose name would it go under. She has tried raising money herself through a social media campaign but still owes more than 1,000 euros to the University of Cape Town. Education should be free. Like, we shouldn't be facing this challenge every year, year in, year out. South African students protest university fees every year. In 2017, then-President Jacob Zuma ruled that higher education would be free for students whose household income is less than €20,000 per year. The rest would have to rely on student loans. The public body overseeing this system received more than 750,000 applications this year. Its spokesperson said that demand has doubled over the last three years and that the solution lies in partnership with the private sector. Yes. South Africa cannot um, afford to help everybody because there isn't enough money from government. However, that model could work for private sector. If a pr private bank has a buzzer and wants to give, they can outsource the administration of that with us. We can find the students for them. Student groups have demanded that the government cancels all existing student debt across South Africa's 26 public universities. The deputy chair of Universities South Africa says this simply isn't an option. The student debt that, is, that is, is still on the books for the sector is currently at about 14 billion rand. Now, there is, it's just impossible to write that debt off without completely crippling the system. The government has financed the studies of close to 4 million students from poor backgrounds but continues to struggle with growing demand year on year. Scotland's University of Aberdeen will return a sculpture to Nigeria after a panel found it to have been acquired immorally. The ancestral bronze piece, which depicts the Oba, or King, was amongst thousands of items looted from Benin City by British forces in 1897. Karis Garland with more. Blatantly looted, according to the head of museums at Aberdeen University, this sculpture depicting the ruler of the Kingdom of Benin will be sent back to Nigeria in the coming weeks. The university sought to have the bronze repatriated in 2019 after a review found it had been acquired in a, quote, extremely immoral way. We felt was a, a, a strong moral argument that it, it's, you know, it was very straightforward. This was looted, therefore it should not be ours. Um, and I think, you know, we all need to think much more carefully about museums. The bronze was part of a haul of thousands of items seized when British soldiers looted the Kingdom of Benin in 1897. For Nigeria, it's a step in the right direction. This is about our identity, about our history and heritage, which has been taken away from us for many years. And uh, we now have the opportunity, and every Nigerian will have the opportunity to see and appreciate uh, our history and culture. The campaign to repatriate colonial-era artefacts has gained momentum recently. Earlier this week, Germany announced it was in talks to give back hundreds of bronzes, the foreign minister calling it a matter of justice. University of Cambridge's Jesus College said it finalised approvals in December to return another Benin bronze. While Nigeria's Commission for Museums and Monuments says two sculptures will also be sent back from the U.S. An avocado farm in southern Kenya has sparked a backlash from critics who say it blocks historic elephant migration routes. 
The dispute over the land reflects the deepening struggle for survival between farming communities and wildlife in the shadow of Mount Kilimanjaro. Tolls to the elephant roams the southern Kenyan wilderness against the backdrop of Africa's highest peak, Mount Kilimanjaro. For almost 49 years, he has survived every purchase and drought, but his undoing may be an unlikely source. Rich countries' appetite for avocados. A tough war has erupted over a planned avocado farm spread over 180 acres near Amboseli National Park. There are two farms there, and both of them are exactly in the middle of a wildlife uh, dispersal area. Uh, some of this we have recorded, some, some of this area has been used by elephants as maternity. Uh, so when we, you do a large farm there, then it means we are going to lose that space. The elephant has to find another space. Agribusiness company Kili Avo Fresh was cleared to plant avocados last year on land it bought from local Maasai. The owners say the development falls outside the important migration corridors. Jeremiah Salash, a shareholder and farm manager, highlights the economic benefits for the country. Land is another source of capital. It's going to provide employment to the local and even beyond the locals. As many people in Nairobi or in uh, city centers, they depend on agriculture. Global demand for avocados has boosted exports from Kenya. Profits rose by 33% to $127 million in the last crop year. Samuel Kaanki heads an association of almost 350 Maasai landowners who live around Kiliavo. He wants that other large-scale developers will jump in if Kiliavo goes ahead. If we lose this land, if we, Kiliavo will be allowed to continue, we will lose others. We have so many other people who are waiting. So it is dangerous. If we lose this, we will lose so many. Following pressure, Kenya's environmental agency ordered the farm to stop working last September while it reviewed the file. Kiliavo has challenged that decision in the environmental tribunal. Coffee production relies on stable environmental conditions, and climate change is taking its toll on growers in Kenya. Unpredictable rain patterns and drought have led to a steep drop-off in their earnings. Many communities that rely on the crop are increasingly worried about their futures. Kenya is Africa's fifth largest producer of Arabica coffee. Plantations here cover 110,000 hectares of land. But according to the country's Coffee Research Institute, climate change is having a deep impact on the sector. In Kenya, we produce Arabica coffee, which prefers cool and um, wet conditions. Uh, because of increase of temperature caused by climate change and depressed rains, then we have poor quality of the yields and poor amounts of the yields. Erratic rainfall has complicated the lives of farmers. Now with the climate change, we have unpredictable rainy patterns, whereby in terms of crop production, we are not able to predict when to apply the fertilizers or farming inputs in general, and that one, it affects coffee production. The irregular rainfall means there are showers during dry periods, so some bushes flower too early. Red ones, green ones, bad ones. This means labor has to be hired for extended periods and farmers' incomes have decreased. The latest figures showed coffee production was expected to decline to 40,000 tons in 2020, down from 47,000 tons four years ago. American football is becoming increasingly popular in Morocco, with both men and women being lured by the appeal of the rowdy sport. The Black Mambas is a pioneering all-female team who were the first women in the country to take on traditional views by giving it their all on the pitch. <laughs> Why are you guys watching them? It's Sunday, which means an intensive training session for the Black Mambas, the first all-female American football team in Morocco. Sabrine brought the team together in 2015. She's a motivated and multilingual coach. 
It's too complicated to speak just in French. We try to do it in English, French and Arabic, because there are people who don't understand English. So we try to translate and do all three at the same time. In Morocco, American football is a little-known sport with no official recognition. To develop the Black Mamba team, Sabrine used the internet to train in sports coaching and invested personal funds to realize her grand ambitions. We would love to play international matches. That would be great for us to get more experience. Or even to play in training camps in Europe. I know that American football is well developed in France. To attract new recruits, Sabrine has had to convince many doubtful parents and beat back prejudices surrounding a sport seen as violent and male-oriented, especially seeing as the black mambas share the field with the male American football team. As a woman wearing a veil, it's difficult to play American football with boys. When my parents saw that we wore decent clothes and that the boys and girls played separately and respectfully, there was no problem for me to play. My mom even started to come and see the matches. <laughs> Hamza, a physiotherapist, has offered them his services on a voluntary basis. So much does he believe in the team's success, despite their lack of resources. If a grant shows up, it would be welcome, because it would allow them to train in better conditions. That's all an athlete or a sportsman needs. They invest their minds and bodies, and then it's up to us to give them the means, the equipment and the help to accompany that. Others have followed in the Black Mamba's wake. There are now five all-female American football teams across the country. One, two, three, yes! Let's go, have a water break. Let's go. Well, that's it for Across Africa for now. Thanks for joining us, and do so again if you can. Take care.